Hey guys, I hope you all had fun during the solar eclipse and that none of you went blind that day. So as you know, there are plenty of conspiracy theories that involve this eclipse, from flat earth to a doomsday prediction to all sorts of stupid ideas. But this girl here we're responding to today really takes the medal from all of them. Now I don't want to spoil anything, so you'll have to see for yourself. As expected, she's a hardcore Christian, which let's be honest, pretty much all conspiracy theorists are Christians or creationists of some sort. And in the beginning of her video, she preaches a ton about a particular Bible verse and her interpretation of Jesus. So I'm gonna skip all of that. If you're interested in her preaching, feel free to watch the original video, although I don't know why you'd want to. Anyway, the juicy part begins in the latter half. Let's take a look. So here is the news of the day. NASA is up to some craziness. And again, I always say this, but when I first saw this article, I said this has got to be satire. Somebody made this thing up. There's no way. Pretty sure you're the only one making stuff up right now. NASA and Montana State University are ready to send loads of bacteria into the stratosphere. But don't worry, it's all for science. Teams across the U.S. will release about 100 balloons during the August 21st total solar eclipse. They'll float around 85,000 feet in the air, and each balloon will have cameras for videos and photos, as well as a tracker. Some of those balloons will also carry samples of a highly resistant bacteria. The reason they're using a highly resistant bacteria is so that it can survive the conditions in that part of the atmosphere. The problem is bacteria like that is also more than likely resistant to antibiotics. Nowhere in the article did it say that these bacteria are resistant to antibiotics. What NASA is actually putting on the balloon is called Penobacillus zerothermodorans. This genus of bacteria have recently risen to popularity in scientific research due to their importance in agriculture. But that's not the main point. These aren't bacteria that are selected due to their antibiotic resistance. No. These are bacteria selected so that they are likely to survive in the harsh atmospheric conditions on the balloons. These are facultative anaerobes, which means they can switch between using or not using oxygen for energy production, but favors no oxygen. This is great due to the lower oxygen levels on the balloon. They are endospore-producing bacteria, which means they have the ability to produce an endospore that is greatly resistant to environmental pressures. This is a whole topic of microbiology that I won't get into, but basically an endospore is triggered during stress and can reform to a mature bacteria once conditions are more favorable. When the bacteria are released into the sky, they will turn into endospores and resist death. That is why this particular bacteria was selected. It's not because they are resistant to antibiotics. It doesn't mean they are resistant to antibiotics. NASA scientists want to see how it reacts to Mars-like conditions. Why do we care what can survive and what can't survive on Mars? It's important because we know that microorganisms could possibly travel through space through a type of resistance. This information could tell us how these bacteria behave in such conditions in space. And the bacteria from Earth is very important because once we travel to Mars, which we eventually will, we will have to be aware on what types of bacteria we are bringing there. This isn't just a process that we should look away from. Microorganisms determine a lot about how ecosystems and environments work. It would be stupid to travel to Mars and expect whatever bacteria we bring there to just be the most optimal. In fact, we have to be quite sure we don't bring any microorganisms to Mars. If we do, then it will throw us off when we try to investigate if Mars contained life in the past. That's a mystery we are still looking into. So in order to control this factor, we have to first understand how bacteria survive in Mars-like conditions. And what better way to do that than to send bacteria up into the skies, since it's a decent simulation of Mars. The upper part of Earth's stratosphere has conditions very similar to Mars's atmosphere at the surface. There, the air is thin, the environment is cold and full of radiation. And during the eclipse, Earth's atmospheric conditions will become even more like Mars. The experiment aims to test the limits of living things on Earth. Yes indeed, we must test which living things on Earth would be able to survive this condition, and also the limits of these organisms. Again, this is to simply better plan our future voyages, not to mention to better understand how panspermia would work. There are plenty of benefits to running this experiment, and NASA took the perfect opportunity to do this. So they're saying it's all about Mars and everything, and then they slip in this line and say, the experiment aims to test the limits of living things on Earth. So as the bacteria falls to the ground, which it's confirmed later in the article, it's, that's what's going to happen, they are going to be testing the limits of the foliage, the trees, the wildlife, the animals, and the people, and how they are going to react to these 
bacteria falling on their heads. You do know that when they said to test the limits of living organisms, they meant the bacteria, right? Not the people or wildlife down below. What the fuck? You completely misinterpreted the article. There's no reason to even drop this bacteria onto things. We're already studying this bacteria in many different scenarios. We know they produce a lot of essential substances related to agriculture. So guess what we do? We study them in agriculture, instead of spending all that money to load them into balloons. The reason we're performing this experiment is to examine how they react in Mars-like conditions, not to sprinkle them onto the wildlife below and see how they react, not to mention how in the fuck NASA would even be able to record all the data of every organism in the fucking United States. Eventually the balloons will pop and devices will send the data and bacteria down to the ground. NASA will compare the stratosphere bacteria with samples left on Earth to see what changed. Researchers say they hope to learn a lot from the balloon experiment. And there you go, the part where you read that scientists will be comparing the bacteria on the balloons with control samples left on Earth. How does that not just tell you that the experiment is on the bacteria? And here's a bonus, guys! The onboard cameras will live stream the eclipse on the internet for millions to watch. So exciting! Dropping deadly bacteria on us. I don't think you realize that Penobacillus xerothermodorans is harmless to both the environment and to humans, right? We know this. Just because you read that these bacteria are resilient doesn't mean they pose any danger. And that just nullifies any freakouts you're having in this video. The sad part is a lot of your viewers are still going to believe you. Because the chemtrails that they are dropping on us, which I saw in the sky today, are not enough, right? That's not enough. Heavy metals dropping down on us every day is not enough. We have to now drop deadly antibiotic resistant bacteria on everyone's heads. Motherfucker. She thinks chemtrails are real too. I'm starting to think that this video might be a troll. I mean, just look at her face. That's the face of a troll. I bring you this because I love you. Because I do think that there is a couple things we can do to be a little precautionary. I do think we can limit for the next few days, if possible, our time outside. If you do have air purifiers, use them. If you have things that you can use to boost your immune system, use them. We're going to be tripling up on our Juice Plus. We're going to be taking colloidal silver and oil of oregano and all those natural things, oil of olive leaf, all those natural things you can get from the health food store that are very highly antibacterial. And she's also a proponent of natural remedies too. What conspiracy theory isn't she part of? But I won't be addressing these other things she says today. I prefer to only talk about one topic per video. But let's keep watching a bit more of her video before I wrap this up. So we're going to be drinking tons of water, just flushing the body out and uh, just stuff like that. And then obviously just praying, pleading the blood of Jesus over your home. I believe that what this whole August 21st solar eclipse is about is a is repentance. And so this is what God laid on our hearts that we're going to be doing tonight. We were kind of looking for where we could see the eclipse and then we felt like God very strongly said, don't watch the eclipse. Yep, because remember when God killed some people for picking up sticks on the wrong day? You better not watch the eclipse. Or better yet, you better not do anything. Because not doing anything is the best way to not fuck up, right? For us, we're in the Eastern Standard Time Zone. So when it's passing through the Eastern Standard Time Zone, and I think it's going to be there for around an hour, that's going to be at like our sundown, which again, coincidentally, is the uh, marking of the first day of the month, the last month of the Hebrew calendar. Hmm, except that it didn't happen on sundown. Looks like somebody's a liar. But yeah, I've heard that a lot of people are saying how August 21st was like a significant day and shit and how it's like the end of the world. Honestly, I've gotten so tired of this by now. Guys, days are just days. They don't have any attached biblical meaning to them. Go home and do something productive for once, like scheduling a vasectomy. If you're watching this and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, our Messiah, his Hebrew name, Yeshua, we believe that all of the prophetic narrative of the Bible is unfolding right before our eyes and that Jesus Christ, who said he is going to come again, is going to come again. All of these things that we see happening in the world around us have to unfold. Yeah, I think I'm good where I am. Anyway, I wish I could have gotten into more detail about what she was saying, but I'll leave that for another video. What was she saying? Chemtrails, natural remedies, stuff like that? I wouldn't be surprised if she were a flat earther either. And with that, today's video is over. If you like what you saw, please hit the thumbs up button to show your support. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next week.